Let's go ahead and continue to build on what we know about electrons and where they can hang out. Remember that where they hang out is actually quantized um, and there's a position and energy associated with with the electrons. So we look, we talked about these principal energy levels, energy levels n is equal to 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we talked about these different subshells. So you see this is the 1s subshell, this is 2s, 2p, and for all of these s's then, remember we can only have how many orbitals? Just one orbital can hold two electrons. And then beginning with n is equal to 2, we pick up these p-type subshells. And how many orbitals can we have in a p-type subshell? Three. Those are degenerate orbitals. And then when n is equal to three, we start to go ahead and we have a 3s, we have a 3p, and we have a 3d. And how many orbitals in a 3d subshell? Five. Very good. And then when n is equal to 4, we pick up our first f-type subshell. And how many orbitals in an f-type subshell? 7. Very good. 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so that's kind of what we have going on here, right? Um, so this is just another way to look at it. So, and this is actually increasing energy as we go down. So principal energy level n is equal to 1, we have 1s. When n is equal to 2, we have 2s and 2p. n is equal to 3, 3s, 3p, 3d. n is equal to 4, 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. Now I'm going to tell you that when you get clear up to energy level, principal energy level n is equal to 5, you can actually pick up a g-type um, G uh, subshell and I'm just guessing, what do you think, nine, okay, uh, nine orbitals in a G-type, and I'm going to go on to six and seven. So in six, you pick up a GH, in seven, you pick up a GH and I. Those little asterisks next to the those higher types of subshells within beginning starting with uh, principal energy level five, six, and seven, these guys actually when we find homes for electrons, when we actually see the nitty-gritty of where the electrons are with regard to subshells, we're going to see that we don't need to use these. They are not occupied as electrons are hanging out in their ground state. Another thing I want to mention, we'll be talking more about this. Oops, looks like I'm we'll be talking more about this is this idea of special electrons. Oops, let me go back. I got ahead of myself. There are special electrons called valence electrons. I'll be talking more about that, but let me give you just a quick look at one way to look at those. Valence electrons actually, um, you know where the valence electrons are if you find the element on the periodic table. And one of the things we talked about the periodic table is we have these going across, we call those, starts the letter P, going across, we call those periods. So if you look at the period that an element is in, you know where the valence electrons are, and that will be the highest n for where the electrons are hanging out. So I went ahead and brought in a periodic table right quick. You don't have this in your notes, but you had it earlier in your notes where these numbers I'm circling here, these are the periods, okay? So for instance, period 5, okay, um, uh, tin is in period 5. Okay, what period is silicon in? Well, silicon is here, so it must be in period 3. See how that works? So, for instance, then silicon, your, those special electrons actually are going to be in principal energy level n is equal to 3. So just kind of put that in the back of your mind.